the Center for Victory podcast of your best day yet. Here at Center for Victory, we're here to help unlock, reinforce, and enrich relationships through personal and professional development. My name is Zach Del Turco. I'm an executive consultant here at the Center for Victory. And today we have the Chief Victory Officer, Eric Guy, back. And we're going to be talking about his book, and we're in Chapter 5. And his book's going to be coming out here in a, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. But it's all around this idea of generosity and giving. That's right. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. What are the benefits of giving? Yeah, so this is coming out of um, one of the chapters. Uh, really, uh, the benefits of giving, looking at really why, why we should give. Uh, one, it makes you happy. Uh, two, it lets you heal and heal faster, uh, believe it or not. And it strengthens and it improves our relationships. And I think that's probably the biggest thing because when we're you know, I'm big on relationships. When your relationships are pretty solid, you know, you, you have all that healing, you have all that uh, the, the good emotion and stuff like that. So when those relationships are solid, but that doesn't happen until we give. And I think in a lot of times in relationships, it's more, what am I getting? What am I getting? What am I getting? Instead of what am I giving mm -hmm. or even how am I serving that other person, whether it be, you know, just as friends or, um, in, a, in a marriage, with your kids, at work, whatever. That's good. So there's definitely benefits of giving, but what are the ripple effects of giving as it pertains to happiness? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, I like the quote by uh, Khalil Gibran. He said, I dreamed that life is all joy and woke up and I saw that life is all service. I served and, and saw that service is joy. So as it pertains to happiness, um, you know, if you want, if you want to become happier, if you want to become happier in whatever you're doing, um, be a giver. Yeah. You know, and I think going back to what I said, a lot of times, um, and and it's mostly how our society has constructed us, just to take, 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 take. Um, but we need to to really give, 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 give. And if you want to be happy, I mean, truly happy you know, don't be a hoarder. <laughs> I mean, just, yeah. just give what you have, whether it's your time, whether it's your resources. Um, you know, it could be just something small. It could just be a smile. We, I think we talked about that in one of our other podcasts. It, you know, it could just be saying hi to somebody or and it just is amazing what can happen. You know, even, you know, you've taken some trips with me in the airport, just, just simple things that can turn the tide from somebody being really grouchy to being really happy. And it might just be, hey, look, picking up their bags for them or, you know, taking something or, paying, you know, whatever, paying for a cup of coffee. It could, just could be anything, yeah. you know, like that. But I really think there's a lot of, of wisdom in that quote um, because the, just the more you give, and I, f I found this in my own life, you know, the times that I get real sad, I just have, I've really pushed myself to give because I find that, like, you know, whatever's going on in my head chemically wise, just it seems to spark and there's a lot of research behind that and then all the all of a sudden I'm happier yeah. right and then the cool thing about that is it it does cause that ripple effect of happiness and more people just naturally want to do it the same way as we start you know if we're constantly talking about scarcity and take and take and taking um, that becomes the mindset as yeah. well if you think about it like you ever watch on TV it's it's, there's a show around borders yeah and people just have a ton of crap all in their house i know me personally i don't want to go to a hoarder's house <laughs> because there's things probably from the 1950s crap that you should have thrown away a long time ago but that's kind of an analogy like with people who are always wanting to give always want to get 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 who wants to be around that yeah well it's 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 difficult i mean they're and again, some, you know, there's some, some always, there's always some kind of issue there that's happened for that person, unfortunately, yeah. probably. But I mean, I've been on a lot of hoarders houses. I mean, the most significant one that I can remember that had the most impact on me, this has been, uh, oh goodness, probably 15 or 20 years, but it was down in Florida. Yeah. This guy had a beautiful, beautiful home. It was right, right on the ocean. I mean, like right on, I'm not exaggerating at all. And a boat dock right on the ocean. Just amazing the outside of the house was beautiful and you walked in and there was just a path there were like newspapers 
newspapers, magazines <laughs> piled up all over the place, and it was literally just he just had to cut a path. And he, what was sad is he was running out of room. Wow. So this this is was so, he looking to build next door? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know that that happens. We just yeah. want and want and want and take and take and take. And, but you know what? One of the things that uh, I had had challenges selling on was like. Like, okay, don't get rid of stuff, but like, if you want, if you really want to have an impact, if you want to have, because he was lonely. He yeah. didn't have anybody after a while because it just created. He had lots of stuff. He didn't have anything, anybody to share that with. And that, that was kind of sad. Um, but, you know, if, if he had given that stuff away, and it's, again, it wasn't like it was a rundown house. The outside was absolutely gorgeous yeah. and everything. He, he had wealth. Yeah. Uh, but he just, he just needed to keep it all to himself. Felt like it. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's kind of like what we're doing right now, and not to brag or boast of ourselves, but like we're here on Saturday morning, and what we're really doing is doing goodwill content, where we're just giving people our knowledge that we know, and for no return at all, just to help people. Mm-hmm. And that's really the state of the company: is how can we help more people? In, in our area, in our society, in, in, in our world. So where did that, where was that birthed out of for you? Where did you get this idea of living a generous life? I think I was impacted by, you know, just the people in my life, uh, especially, I would say, my, my two grandmothers, just my family in general. They, you know, I, you know, every family is dysfunctional, but I think we were just, <laughs> you know, naturally givers. I mean, I had, you know, my, both of my grandmothers were, serious givers um, with their time with their resources and everything like that uh, simple things you know my, my cousin was my coach you know uh, I saw my mom give all the time and she's always especially this time of year she's always making cookies right and, and cookies I don't even need right yeah. but she just giving them out makes tons and tons of cookies um, I, th- I had some great teachers I had some really great great teachers growing up that were very impactful. Some of those teachers uh, were my coaches. Still have relationships with them today, and and just what what they had have given. I mean, it, it's just little things. I mean, I have one coach that, um, you know, one year uh, actually bought me my my shoes for football. Um, you know, it, it's just little things like that. You know, they didn't have to do that, but I, you know, I just saw something in them. Like, uh, I guess especially with my grandmas, they both of them seem so chill. Most of the time, it's like, well, how do you get so chill? I mean, yeah. you're either on drugs or you're doing something, but yeah. it was this giving nature, and just, they, 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 they had this understanding, it's cool, I hope I get there someday. Like, I just, like, if I give, like, a, it's going to come back somehow. And I, and I really believe that, but I want to get to their, like, Yoda level. Yeah. I mean, they, they just, it was just like, crazy, and I've seen other people like that, and, and my wife's grandfather was the epitome. I mean, it, you know, he was like the supreme Jedi at giving. Wow. Dude gave everything. Away. He's like, you want my house? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, he did that. Like, wow. he gave, like, uh, he had this beautiful home and sold it for, for hardly nothing. Um, because he, this family really wanted it. Wow. And he, like, it didn't bother him. Yeah. But you know, he gave of his time, and I mean, he was just a great person. But even even right before he passed away, he still looked so young at heart. It was amazing, right? So what it does, and I, I know that's another chapter in the book. But I mean, there, there's just you know, there's just so many benefits, and, and I think what really prompted me to really birth that was looking at you know what makes a happy person. Yeah. And this is in my first book. I mean, I was just you know, I was going around. Kind of, I felt miserable, and, and maybe I wasn't miserable as I thought I was, but to me, I was miserable. Mm-hmm. I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't happy. And what I saw when I started researching, and this has been years and years ago, when I started researching and really getting into what makes people happy and what makes people successful, I, I just noticed the people that I was around were givers. So even yeah. if it was a word or something like that, um, you know, they... They just gave of themselves, of their wisdom, of their knowledge, of their resources, of their time. So, so as we finish up on this chapter, yep. chapter five, on the ripple effect, 
give us some high high level bullet points on what somebody can expect when they read this book. I think number one is just change your mindset. I mean, that's that's like the biggest thing, and and I think we take it for granted here sometimes. Um, yeah, because we talk about it and we do it quite a bit, uh, and I never want to take it for granted, mm -hmm. right? Um, but some people have a tough time with it. You know, go from being a consumer to a creator, from a taker to a giver. Um, I would say second, look for ways to give. We've always offered to, to anybody watching, like if you need, not to give to us, but to, the, to some of the companies, especially the nonprofits that we work with, we'd be happy to connect you with them. It's definitely lots of opportunity to do that. And last but not least is just, just do it. I mean, start giving, you know, start it wherever you're at, start at home, start at work, just do something and get the ball rolling. That's good. I want to leave you guys with this quote from The Million, Millionaire Next Door by Robin Char Sharma. He says this, the happiest people are not those getting more, but those giving more. I want to say that one more time. The happiest people are not those getting more, but those who are giving more. Thank you so much for staying tuned to our Center for Victory podcast of your best day yet. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Also hit that little bell button for notifications. Also subscribe. And we want, to, we want you to know that you can always reach out to us. Go to centerforvictory.com and reach out to us. We'd love to connect with you. We always like to leave you with this. It's this quote. Wherever it's you're this. at. Come on. <laughs> Wherever you're at. Whatever you're doing. Make this your best day yet. See you.